The Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting our sins against us. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. Listen, nobody goes to heaven except through the cross, through the blood of Jesus Christ. He established the way. So we're going to look at four aspects of God's requirement to go to heaven tonight after a word of prayer. If you're a believer, by that I mean you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day. That's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. The Bible says that gospel that I just mentioned is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. That's Romans 1:16. And then we're told, for by grace we're saved through faith and not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. These are very important principles because it's a Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people for spiritual living. Unbeliever can't understand the spiritual meaning of it because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit to interpret it. You can read that in 1 Corinthians 2, 14 through the third chapter, verse 3. He's called the natural man. He's a person without the Holy Spirit. We live in the dispensation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to teach us the truth. Not only do you learn it by the Holy Spirit, but you live it by the Holy Spirit or it doesn't work. So it's very important that you understand that. When you come to Bible study, because it's a spiritual book for spiritual people for spiritual living, you can't study it in carnality. How would I know if I'm a carnal believer? There would be evidence of personal sin. You would know it, whether the rest of us knew it or not. It could be in three categories at least. For example, mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, or overt sins. If you're aware of having committed those without confession of them in silence and privacy to the Father, then you're carnal. It's just that simple, James 1, 13, 14. You're carnal. You can't study the Bible in the carnality. You can't study in carnality. Even though you're saved, you, can't, you have to be spiritual. It's a spiritual book for spiritual people for spiritual living. It's what separates the Bible from all the other books in the library. <clears throat> so, what's the answer to carnality? 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1, 9, among many. But 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, we should because we're all believer priests. If, you're, if you believe the gospel of Christ, you're a believer priest, 1 Peter 2, 5 and 9. In 5 and 9, you're told that you're a royal priest and a holy priest. Why? Not because you earned it, because Christ earned it for you, and it's a gift from God to your life. These are status privileges. <clears throat> it is based on positional sanctification. So, he says, if you confess your sin, that could be one of those three categories, whatever is there in your conscience conviction of the spirit, you need to confess that. Homologeo means to name it, cite it, state it. Now, why? I mean, God knows it. He knows everything. It's to tell you where you're failing in your walk with God. 1 John 1, 9 is designed to say to you, what's going on, bud? What's going on here? Why are you walking in carnality when you would be, should be walking in the Holy Spirit and should be walking by faith? You're walking by sight and you're walking in the flesh. What's going on here, bud? You confess your sin. It reminds you of an area of weakness in your life that needs to be dealt with. And how do you deal with it? You deal with it by walking in the power of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5, 16 and 17. The power of the Holy Spirit is the power over the weakness of the flesh. The first place this type of learning takes place is in a Bible study like this. You're not going to get anything tonight if you don't confess your sin. If you don't stop and examine yourself through your priesthood and are, uh, if listen, if you're not aware of any personal sin, look, then Offer your prayer and say, Father, I, I'm, a spir I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual. I need to learn something tonight. And you certainly will. That's his responsibility. So I'm going to 
give everybody a chance, those on the internet tonight, this is your responsibility as much as ours. We call it classroom etiquette. I want you to spend an hour and get the maximum out of this hour of study. Can't get it in the flesh, but you can get it in the spirit. You know, when Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit in the upper room discourse of John 13 through 17, he kept referring to the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. When the spirit of truth comes into your life, he will teach you all things in the matters of truth. That's, that's what we're asking of you tonight before we start Bible study. My invitation to you is to engage your life for the study of the word of God. I do it at the beginning of the study so you can get something from it rather than the end of it when you go home. Let us pray. Give you this moment of silence as a believer priest and dwelt by the Holy Spirit to make confession if necessary. Through the principle of 1 John 1 9, it's a principle that brings you back into fellowship. This is a matter, 1 John 1 9 is a matter of sanctification, not salvation. 1 John 1 7 is an issue of salvation. 9 is an issue of fellowship with God. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for these that have come our way by the internet and by automobile. We pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth of the Word of God as it is exercised out by me in the teaching and the Holy Spirit by interpreting. And I pray, Father, that spiritual momentum and growth would happen. We would not be the same person when we leave that we were when we came because of the exercise of truth in our soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> so point number one, looking at four points about God's requirements to go to heaven. Even Jesus had one. And if he doesn't go to the cross, he doesn't go back to heaven. If he does, he goes back to heaven. I mean, that's what the writer is telling us. Listen, you're not going to go to heaven apart from the cross either. He didn't die there for his sins. He died there for our sins. And when we go to the cross, we get a pass to heaven. Not, not because we deserve it, because he earned it for us. It's given to us by grace through faith and not of herself. It is a gift, a gift. So here's the first point that I, I want to discuss with you. Our lesson text declares, that's, that's Hebrews 9, 11, 12. Our, our lesson text declares that the blood of Jesus Christ opened the door of heaven to all who believe the gospel of grace salvation. It's not an offer to some people. It's an offer to all people. You know, everybody quotes John 3.16, and, and that's a great one, you know, if you're going to pay attention to it. It's, you know, in the old King James, they had it right when they said, whosoever. <laughs> I mean, whoever wants to believe the gospel can get saved. And everybody's going to get a chance to hear the gospel because it's God's responsibility to bring the gospel to a person or the person to the gospel. That's his. Listen, he's big enough to handle all this. And in the day when the Holy Spirit indwells every church age believer at the point of salvation, that mission can be accomplished easily by the directive hand of God. The internet has speeded that whole deal up. I mean, I can pop the gospel. We, we're into 25 nations right now. And ho hopefully to sweep as far as we can that the internet will reach them. But I mean, we, we preach a very clear gospel and what you have to do to be saved. Yeah. So Christ, when he dies on that cross, he opens the door. It's not just for Jews. Galatians, the third chapter, verse 27 and 8. In verse 28, in verse 27, he says, you're baptized by the Holy Spirit into Christ. At the point of salvation, the Holy Spirit baptized you. In the they call it, in theology, we call that positional sanctification. As we teach it, we call it positional truth because there are many things you need to know about it. Then in the very next verse, he says, once you're identified with Christ and every person who believes the gospel in the church age is, he said, then you need to know something about your identity in Christ. Your identity in Christ, you need to bring into a solid understanding of what that means as you deal with people on earth. He said, in Christ, 
There's no Jew and Gentile. There's no male and female. There's no free and slave. Other places he goes on and he says, there's, like we're in the book of Matthew on Sunday, there are no rich and no poor in Christ. We are all one. We are equal in Christ. Therefore, when you go around and pull all your prejudice out of all your different pockets and apply them to your life, you're way out of line. You are way out of line. Would you agree with that? But you didn't learn that from the Lord. And he says, you didn't learn that from the Lord. You didn't learn that from the Lord. You, you learned that from another set belief system, which is called the world. You know who operates that one? The God of this world is Satan. John 10, 20, uh, John 12, 31. So it is, it's important that we understand that when Christ goes to the cross and he dies on that cross for the sins of mankind, behold, the Lamb of God has come to take away the sin of the world. You know, that, that, that John, you know, that John 129 and other passages like that. First John 2, 2, he's a propitiation for our sins and not only for ours, but the sins of the whole world. Is that, does that open the door open to everybody who, who, who desires to be saved can be saved? You know what we call that? In theology, we call that unlimited atonement. That's what we call it. <clears throat> it is only through the blood of Christ that a member of the human race can enter the same holy place where Jesus is. Jesus is seated in heaven, the third heaven. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And if you want to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord where he is today, you've got to go through the gospel of Jesus Christ. You too have to go through the cross. You've got to go through the mediator between God and man to get to God. Jesus said it in John 14, 6. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no one can come to the Father except through me. I mean, how clear can that be? If there was no other verse in the Bible that said that, is that not clear enough to understand that? No one else? Now, I don't know how much clearer you get that. No one. I, pretty clear to me. But I'm just an old country boy, so what do I know? In John 10, 19, it says, Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence... You got confidence that when you die, you're going to heaven. I ask people that all the time. That's one of my walk-ins. Are you confident today that if you die, you go to heaven? People in the South, nine, nine out of ten will say, uh, yeah. Then you have to ask them a couple questions based on what. Now, when you go to the North like I do, you, you get a straight answer on that. They'll tell you straight up. But down here, people are churchy. They're real churchy. That's okay. I, I don't have a problem with it one way or the other. I don't care. The question is, what are you basing that on? Well, you know, I try to do, I try to do good. I try to help. I, I try to do this. Well, that's it. Listen, you've got a set of morals up for that. But morality won't get you to heaven. It may get you some friends. It may make everybody pat you on the back. But we'll get you to heaven. Your good works or your bad, bad works, I don't care what works. They're not going to get you. Works won't get you there. But listen, faith will. Faith is believing that the object has the power to save you. And what is the object? Is Christ dies on the cross and buried and raised from the dead. It's called the gospel. And the power to save you is in the gospel, not in yourself. That's, that's Romans 1.16. So in John 10, 19, he says, therefore, brethren, since we have the confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of, Christ, by the blood of Jesus, and he's, we're, in, we're, in he, we're in Hebrews 8, 9, and 10, and he's talking about the holy place he's talking about here in regard to Jesus Christ is because he went to the cross, was buried, raised from the dead, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. He's talking about heaven. Enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way. That's called the new covenant. Not by, not by, not by shadow Christology. 
not by shadow Christology, by the blood of goats and calves and the ashes of heifers. By a new and living way, listen, which he inaugurated for us through his veil, that is his flesh. That's the incarnation. That's the incarnation of the Son of God all the way to the cross in obedience to the will of God. Not my will, thy will be done. Who goes on that cross and gives up everything he had in eternity for you and I to go there. I mean, who? Uh... Now, in Hebrews, the 12th chapter on your paper, look at verse 23 and 24. Pay attention to the five twos. That's a T-O. Pay attention to the five twos, the T-O's. He says, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. If you've been born again, you're enrolled in heaven, right? Apparently, apparently, he's talking about the Lamb's book of life. Okay? You are enrolled. If you're what? Born to get? Now, I didn't say you had to go to church every time and open and teach the Sunday schools, do the choir, uh, clean the bathrooms, do whatever you think is good. That's gonna, it's not by works. It's by being born again. How am I born again? I, I believe that Jesus died for my sins, not his was buried and raised from the dead to give me eternal life. He conquered sin on the cross and death from out of the grave. And that's all mine. That's part of the package that I get when I believe it. I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it, but I got it. I got it. You know why? Because I believed it. <laughs> I believed it. Listen, where I came from, that's the only way I would have ever got it. Just straight up faith. Because I kept saying to somebody, I kept asking them, when they presented the gospel, I kept asking them, what do you want from me, man? What's the deal? What, where's the back door on this deal? There's got to be a, if there's a gimme, there's got to be, I got gotcha. you. And when I was repeatedly told over and over again, Buddy, you don't understand. You're saved by grace through faith and not of yourself is a gift of God. That's stuck in my soul and has been there for ion years. You can pull that out with anything. So the two here first to the general assembly, the church of the firstborn who firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect through the blood of Christ and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the sprinkled blood, which speaks better than the blood of Abel, which is a whole lesson in itself. Did you pay attention? All those twos are yours by God's grace. All of them. You don't earn any one of them. <laughs> That's five things right there in that one little passage. Here's a second idea. The sacrificial offering of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, which both were required for salvation. Both were required. Sacrificial offering of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ removed the sin barrier of Adam. Thirteen judicial charges of Adam's sin upon all mankind. In that little booklet of 50 things you receive in salvation, be sure you have one of those. Everybody should have one of the 50 things you get at the point of salvation you can never lose in time and eternity. Tell us how important that is. The sin barrier is the 13 judicial charges uh, alienated from God, uh, spiritually blind, spiritually dead, condemned, cursed. Right? Cursed by the law. Cursed by the law. Who would want to keep the law when it, all it can do is curse you? On the one hand, it curses you. On the other hand, it points you to Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need, you need. Uh, why would anybody that has Jesus ever go back to the law? Because the law can only curse you. 
condemn you and curse you. And Jesus removed that. When you get saved, he removes that. A a a enmity, that's a position in Adam. In 1 Corinthians 15, 23, those, those 13 positional, those are 13 positional truths in Adam. If any man, if you're in Adam, you're dead. If you're in Christ, you're made alive. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 22. What does it mean to be dead in Adam? That's one of 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin, and that's why you're a sinner. You're not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you're a sinner. And listen, you don't have any options. It could be moral or immoral. It don't matter because, listen, you are under 13 judicial charges that can only be removed by the work of Christ on the cross. Only. Don't let people lie to you. I'm telling you the truth. You say, oh, well, you might be lying to me. Well, then check me out by the word of God. Check me out. I don't teach you anything that I don't back it up with the word of God. Well, it said other people do too. I said, check it out. What do I know? Holy Spirit's there. Listen, I'm just a teacher. Holy Spirit's in your life. If you're a believer, he's there to teach you the truth. If you're not a believer, then he'll convict you of, of what is true. And he'll, he'll tell you straight up that the other is a lie. These, that's the convicting power of salvation. That's not me. I'm just going to tell you the truth, and he's going, to, he's going to push it the rest of the way. That's what I believe anyhow. The work's on him, not on me. I mean, I've got to be faithful. I've got to be obedient. He's got to do the work. Can't, how could I convict anybody? I could convict anybody. If I did, it wouldn't be worth anything. Listen, I couldn't even do that with my own kids. <laughs> I quit that one as soon as, as, soon as they got a little age. Well, shit, I can't do that with them either. Well, it was a good thing. So the sacrificial offering of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ removes the sin barrier or the 13 judicial charges of Adam's original sin and therefore opens the door of grace and redemption to all mankind. I mean, God's got you under 13 judicial charges. There's nothing you can do about it. You didn't earn them, deserve them. You got born into them. You need to get born again to get out of them. <laughs> can I tell you, you may not realize, but there's somebody outside of these walls that want to hear this, just like me. They may not appear when you first approach them. They not appear like a good candidate. <laughs> Because they're stuck in the world up to there. But let me tell you, I wanted to hear it. I just wanted someone to be truthful with me. Stop blowing smoke in my face. Give me all this la, 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 la. Tell me, just tell me the absolute truth. Let me decide. There are a lot of guys like me out there. You first meet me, I'm going to challenge you. What you I'm going to challenge what you believe to see if you believe anything. I can't tell you how many people I ran off from a witness on me before I had somebody that I couldn't run off because all they did is come, they come with a message to deliver me. They delivered it and left. <laughs> I got a message for you. I said, well, give it to me. They gave it to me and left. What do you think of that? Then I hunted them down. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> hey, could we talk again? I hunted them down. Listen to Ephesians 2.14. He himself, when you see that kind of phrase put together, it means he alone. He himself. You know, a little kid even understands this. I do it myself. And they really mean that too. They mean get your hands off that. They don't know how to say that yet. They're not adult. Me, me do it. Me do it. You got any of those little kids anymore? Everybody ought to have one of those, one or two of those in your life. <coughs> For he himself is our peace. Yeah, that's peace, that's peace with God. That's peace with God now. That's Romans 5, 1 and 2. That's peace with God through the cross. 
That's another one of those 50 things. He himself is our peace who made both groups into one, broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. It, listen, that, that barrier is, 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 is what I described in Galatians 3.27. There's no longer Jew. There's no longer Gentile. There's no longer this, no longer that, no longer this, no longer that. None of that. As he's talking about barriers. Listen, there are a lot of different kinds of barriers. The barrier that you have to have removed is the sin barrier. When you believe the gospel, that's removed. That sin barrier, 13 judicial charges. And then you're given the, fit, the, the other 37 things. Then there are all kinds of other ones. He talked about neither Jew nor Gentile, no, neither male nor female, neither rich nor poor, nor the slave or that. See all the different barriers there are that we carry in? The most important one for us to get rid of is the sin barrier. Ephesians 1, 7, in him, that's positional truth, positional sanctification. I'm explaining to you positional truth. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. In him, positional truth, that's called positional sanctification. That's positional truth. In him, see, it's in him that we have the 20 status privileges of who we really are in the world. You know, everybody says, well, who, you know, here's how they say, who are you? They say, what do you do? then they make all kinds of judgments based on what you do. It, they didn't ask you, well, how are you educated? You know, how are you? How are you? They said, you know, what do you do? And they think they can, they can read you out pretty good by that. I mean, I'm not saying that's not good. I'm just saying that how much can you read into that? But in Christ, none of that matters. In Christ, none of that matters. You know who really loves this message? Prisoners. And I tell them, I tell them, you should have listened to this message before you got in here. <laughs> because now... I'm on the opposite side. When you were out in the world and I talked to you, then you were suspicious of everything I said and did. I'm in the prison talking to you about Jesus Christ, and now I'm suspicious of everything you do. <laughs> Funny. And I had to break that in my life. I said, I had to finally just say, I quit. I can't do that. I was suspicious of every guy. Oh, I, I run. And I, and I go like, mm. I, wait, wait, it's coming. He wants something. Just wait. He wants something. <laughs> I hate to get rid of that. That's absolutely not scriptural, is it? It's not what for, well, that's not the way I'm supposed to think. But you see, that's the way we often think, and that's the way they think out there, and then they get in here, and then I, I wind up in the prison system. I think like they do before they got in prison. <laughs> I don't know. Just funny how God can teach you things, and no matter where you show, he's got some lessons for you if you listen. I went, hey, how did that work? I just, that whole thing got flipped on me. The good thing was I could walk away that day. <laughs> that was a good part of that. But what do I know? In him we have redemption. That's the big deal. In him we have redemption through his blood. You know, redemption is one of the nine communion factors. When you take communion or the Eucharist, as we call it around here, Listen, this is one. We said, this is the covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the blood, my blood. This is a new covenant in my blood. Redemption is one of the nine factors of the blood. When Christ goes to the cross, he doesn't die for his sin. He dies for ours. He drinks our sin and we drink his salvation. And, and uh, there are nine factors. If you read the scriptures, and we do, there are nine communion factors in the 50 things. There are nine communion factors that you should pay attention to. He says, well, do this in remembrance of me. You should be thinking about the fact that that blood redeemed me from the slave market of sin. I got reconciled. I got propitiated. I have justification. I have peace with God. And the list goes on. There are nine. When you do the Eucharist, your mind ought to be just full of praise and honor when he lays this thing out. This is what the, this is what the blood of Christ secured in your salvation. You could not secure it in yourself. Wow. And so this, for me, this is a pretty important Ephesians 1. I, in him, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. 
See, that's a, those just judicial charges. According, listen to this. According to the riches of his grace. It didn't say according to the riches of our works. Seems to be a theme of mine tonight for some reason. When you turn the page, you will see he says two other things. He says, for he himself, that's a code now, right? He alone. He himself, watch this now, bore our sins, what, where? On his body on the cross. Hmm? You know, on, a, on atonement, you had two animals that were offered. One is, one, is going to be, one is going to be killed and the blood is offered and the other, other one and the sins are going to be put on that one and sacrificed and the sin also sin is going to be put on the other one. It's going to be sent away alive. When Christ died on the cross, he did it all. Not only did he shed his blood to secure our salvation, our redemption aspect of this, but also did he secure it for us as believers when we do commit a sin, we can confess that sin. We don't have to go back and get saved again. This is not a matter of salvation. That deal is done. This is a matter of sanctification. This is a matter of the work of the Holy Spirit. So what we do is we confess our sin because that work has been extended to my life. I'm the goat that's alive <laughs> over here. Yeah, be careful now. Good thing I don't have any of my grandkids in here because they'd be calling me the old. Yeah. Well, you said I could. You. So the body, his body. This is the perfect body of Christ. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Second Corinthians five twenty one. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You have to be made it in your salvation. You're made righteous because of the gift of Christ on his body. Listen to, listen to Romans 5, 9. Much more than having now been justified, that, that's a judicial term, having been justified, you know, justice, having been justified by his blood, I just had his body. Now I got his blood. Do you understand that? And both, both issues were sin. Because it has to be the lamb of God has to go to the cross without sin to bear sin. Do you understand that? And it's going to be put on his body and it's going to require his blood, his life-giving blood, He's going to have to give himself voluntarily, give his life, blood, for my redemption. And he did it. Whew. I mean, that's about as good as it gets, people. How much more than having been justified? I get justified. I get justified through the blood of Christ. See, that's one of those nine things in the cup on the Eucharist day. And not only that, he says, justified by blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. How about that? Saved, we shall be saved from the wrath of God. That's what you get if you don't believe the gospel and you die in this life. You're going to receive the wrath of God. You're going to, be, you're going to go to... Sheol, a place called Gehenna, you're going to go to a place of torment and you're going to wait till the great white throne judgment and you're going to be taken from there before the great white throne judgment and then you're going to be cast into a lake of fire according to Revelation 20. In, in other words, if you compare, you just say, where do you get that? Well, Luke 16 and Revelation 20 in the front of your Bible is a, it'll tell you where to find them. Just, you know, like any good book, it has a place to tell you where to go. And a good book does, as it tells you where to go. Here's the Eucharist. Here's what we say every Eucharist or, or communion or Lord's Supper, however you want to call it. We call it Eucharist because of the Greek word giving thanks that's used with these two elements. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then in the same way, he takes the cup after supper and he says, this cup 
is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as drink it in remembrance of me. What should we remember about him? That he came and died and left? No, you're supposed to remember this is about the blood. You're to remember what did the blood of Christ secure for me in my life that is forever. Because he died one death forever. And there are nine things in that 50, 50 things pamphlet. This would be well worth it. Listen, just take a little time and read it. You don't have to watch the news and television all the time. Just take a break, have a cup of coffee, eat a donut or something healthy like that. <laughs> yeah. Three, there is only one mediator between God, that is heaven, and man, that is earth. Therefore, no one goes to heaven apart from the gospel of grace, salvation in Christ Jesus. No one. If you think you're going, you're wrong. I mean, God didn't send his son down here, put him on a cross, die. The, the perfect sacrifice for sin, death and hell. He takes the wrath for me. Come on. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, and 6, there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom. There's another legal term. That's the price, that's the price of redemption. And the word ransom is interesting because it has its anti-lutron, Ante on the front of that hypes that thing really up up good, and it 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 it's, it it means that he he paid a ransom that no one could ever pay. You couldn't get enough people together to pay it. He is the only one that could pay the ransom price to remove us from the slave market of Adam's sin. The only one, and so they rev up this offering. They rev this price of redemption up with an ante on the front of it. In Matthew 20, 28, the writer talks the same thing, but he separates these terms. He separates them. Uh, he separates ante and lutron, and it means the same thing. The thing that we often miss that in 1 Timothy 2, 5, and 6, it says, who gave himself a ransom for what? For all. Now, listen. Now, write this on your paper up there. You'll have to draw a circle and then put, well, anyhow, the word for. I don't know how you want to do it on your paper. But see the word for? Let me tell you what that is. That's Hooper. That's H-U-P-E-R. That's H-U-P-E-R plus the ablative in the Greek language. And it's used for substitution in your place. In, instead of him, he, did, he was in your place. As substitute, he, when it says up here, I lost my place. Let me get back. He gave himself as a ransom for, that's Hooper plus the ablative. Now, Hooper, let me tell you how important Hooper is. In the English, in the English language, we change Hooper to super. You know, you got a super athlete, you got a, a the Super Bowl, whatever it is. We're talking about the top of the line, aren't we? Hooper. But in this case, it, it, is a, it is the ultimate offering. It is the ultimate price. It is the ultimate price to redeem men by grace. The price has been paid. Nothing is owed on the debt. Christ paid your debt. And you could never pay it. You couldn't get enough friends together to pay for it. If the whole world got together and said, we'll all put a dollar in it. Or we'll put all of our money in it. Wouldn't work. Because the ransom was for all. That's pos. All. All. All means all. It's pos in the Greek language. It's pos. 
And we refer to that in theology as unlimited atonement. That he died one death for all mankind. And everybody has a shot at it. It's a shot called saved by grace through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift. Everybody has a shot at it. But you get it the way it's been laid out. He dies for your sins as a substitute for your sin in your place. So that you can be with him in his place. <laughs> Behold, I go to prepare a place for you. <laughs> a pre prepare a place for you. At John 14. In Hebrews 9, 15. And for this reason, he is a mediator of the new covenant. In order that since a death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions. It requires a death. What is the price of redemption? The death of somebody who is absolutely perfect. As a human being. The lamb of God. The lamb, not God. The lamb of God that's come to take away the sin of the world. And so two things, as we saw, are required. It has to, has to have the, the perfect body to go to, to there. By that, girls, I mean without sin. Not the perfect body as we might think, you know, by human standards. Of course, he may have had it. I don't know. But that's not what did it. In Galatians 3.22, but the scriptures having shut up everyone under sin. Now, what sin would that be that got us all? The Adam said, it's the only one who could get you. Lying said, I, don't, I never lied. Cheat? No, I never cheated. Dancing? No, well, well, I guess that wasn't one. Let's see. Uh, when I first came to the South, it was. If girls had bathing suits on, you couldn't go swimming with them. If they had bathing suits on. I mean, the, the full, none of this, two, two pieces, and they don't know if there's two there. I'm not talking about that stuff. <laughs> I mean, they could have went with blue jeans and sweatshirts and you still could swim with them because haven't we come a long way? Well, anyhow. The scriptures has shut up everyone under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. <laughs> that they Listen, the promise of faith is given to those who believe. Isn't that interesting way? Because you see, you see, the word believe is pastuo, which is the verbal form of pistos, which is the word faith. I just find that interesting. I mean, that's like twisting your mind a little bit. Here's the point four, and then we'll close. Nobody goes to heaven without believing that his sin has been cleansed by the blood of Christ and that his death has been conquered by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah, go, go. Straight up and straight out, people. You're not going to go. And so I bring you this message tonight, how to get to heaven. Jesus said, I'm the only way. I am the mediator. And here's what I've mediated for you. I, I went to the cross and died in your place for Adam's sin that you're under 13. You cannot. The only price that God would accept is the price of his own son. And he had to qualify even for that. He had, to be, he had to be a lamb without blemish or spot. 1 Peter 1, 19, and he was. He could have no growth defects, nor he could have no birth defects, nor growth defects. He couldn't be born as Adam was born. Couldn't be born under Adam's sin. He had to go virgin birth. Hypostatic man, he lived on earth as hypostatic man. Completely God and completely man in one, in one unique person. And he has to go to the cross. He who knew no sin became sin for me, for us. <clears throat> this is a per, 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 listen, no wonder he's struggling in Gethsemane. <clears throat> That's a deal. <clears throat> Here's what the Bible says. Hebrews 2, 9. We do not see him who was made a little lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of the suffering of death crowned. Now, last Sunday... We dealt with the f four crowns that believers can get. And we talked about last week, because I'm in the book of James, James 
uh, 112 talks about the crown of life, that those who go through undeserved suffering for the sake of Christ uh, get, if they run the race, you know, to the finish. You don't have to win it. You have to finish it, though. Paul said, run, run the race to the finish. Uh, keep the faith. So th that's important. So we talked about that. Th but look, what, what's interesting, I mentioned that the word for the crown is Stephanos, the word for crown. Now, there's a crown for the king, diadem. That's a Greek word. But Stephanos is the one that's used here that was used with the Greek Olympics. This is the word crown, reefs and stuff. What is interesting, notice this is the word that's used here, and I, I showed it to you in the verbal form. Jesus, because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. Crowned, that's a Stephanos. You know what that's given to? It's given to the person who finishes the race. It's the perfect tense. He's going to wear that crown until he comes back again and is given the crown of diadem, Lord of Lord and Kings of Kings and business. And when you get to heaven and you go before the judgment seat of Christ, there are four crowns up for grabs if, if, if you'll walk it out in your life. Right? And we, and we talked about him Sunday. Listen, you know, yeah, I'm sticking a carrot out in front of you. That's a good one because that the crown, whatever that, whatever, and there are four crowns, whatever that crown is, it's attached to something. And listen, you walk that out to get it. You go through the suffering. You, uh, you, there are things that you, that you do, that, which is done by faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and there are status symbols in the next life. They are much bigger than I can possibly tell you to get you to even wrap your brain around it. They're gigantic. They're gigantic. The, 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 these crowns will play a major role in the millennial age. They'll play, a, they'll play a bigger role than you could possibly imagine. And listen, they're up for grabs. They're up for grabs. So, you know, and you can get more than one. Just pile them up top of me. <clears throat> Where this on Monday and this on Tuesday and this on Wednesday and this on Thursday. I don't know. What do I know? Listen. Suffering, listen, you know that when they put that crown of thorns on his head, the Romans, the Roman soldiers did to mock him, right? They were mocking him. Oh, and, and that crown they put there, that was to symbolize their Olympic games, like putting a gold medal on them or something. Except they built that, and you know what the Bible calls it? Stephanos, the crown of thorns. Listen, and he wore it honorably too. But God saw another crown. He saw the suffering death crown with honor and glory. What a wonderful thing. God's view of us is so much different. Our view of one another or what other people perceive. Everybody standing around the cross went, oh. And God went, well done. Well done, buddy. Well done. That, cro that crown up there was nothing to deal with the suffering. But you know what God saw from the heaven side? He saw his son take it all for the father. He saw him take one for the father. And the father, what he saw in his son doing it was honor and glory. That's the way God sees us, people. <clears throat> That's the way God sees us. He sees our potential. He sees what's better in us than we see in ourselves or other people could possibly see in us. You need to pay attention to that stuff. Here's Titus 2.11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all mankind. This is Jesus Christ coming into the world, offering salvation to every person who will believe. If you're, if you're home somewhere uh, off our internet, somewhere sitting out there in the podunk part of the world, we invite you to come into salvation in Jesus Christ tonight. I invite you to come. How do I come? You believe that Jesus died for your sin. He died in your place to remove your Adamic sin from your life, the 13 judicial charges that never be upon your life ever again. 
and that gives you a license to go to heaven. You've got to believe that he was buried and raised on dead for the third day, and you'll get eternal life. When you die, you'll go to heaven. But not because you earn it, not because you deserve it, because God graced you. For by grace are we saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is a gift. You don't get it later. You get it now. You wear it later. The moment you get saved, you get it. You're enrolled in heaven's book. That's what he's told us, Diane. Here's Hebrews 10, 12. But he, having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, you can't lose your salvation because he can't go back to the cross again. One's done. One and done. One and done. One and done. One and done. <clears throat> then he sat down. You know why he sat down at the right hand of God the Father in heaven? Because the work was done. The work of salvation was done. Obtained Listen to me. We read this. Obtained eternal redemption. He obtained eternal redemption. He obtained it. That work is done. Doesn't mean he doesn't have other assignments. He does. <clears throat> Head of the church, high priest, <clears throat> has the sovereign authority over everything of God right now. He operating. I mean, he's got, you know, in case you're a green people, people, he's got all that. Don't worry about the weather. Don't worry about it. If they give you an alert to hurricanes, there's tornadoes coming, listen to them. But other than that, listen, God's got this. We're going to breathe tomorrow. It's okay. I mean, he's got it. <clears throat> By one offering, he's perfected for all time those who are sanctified. By one offering, he, well, I don't know why people don't get this. By one offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. You know the moment you're sanctified? Listen, the word sanctified, the word saint comes out of the same, same word in the Greek language. Same idea. <clears throat> you, you, the moment in Christ, you're sanctified in Christ. You are a saint. It's one of the 20 status privileges you are. Do you still commit a sin? Yeah, but you're never a sinner. But listen, when Christ dies on a cross and you believe it, he died for that sinner in order to transfer from the status of sinner into the status of saint. If you want to, if you want to grow into that title, then get in, get your head in the Word of God and start living by the by the Spirit and stop living by the flesh. And you'll be able to see what all that status means in your life. I'm a saint. What's that mean? Listen, it's the word holy. I mean, it means that God has set you aside for holy living. How do how do you do that? You put your head in the Word of God and figure out what what He means by that for your life. By this we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Aren't you glad for that once for all? Amen. Well, let's close in a word of prayer. And we'll release the internet people. Give me a moment here, people. You, you can shuffle those papers in a moment. Okay? We ain't going nowhere now. Here we go. Listen, you need to be sure that you got no questions about this thing tonight. You want to go to heaven? Who doesn't want to go to heaven? Listen, there's only one mediator. It's the person of Jesus Christ. And here's what he did that you've got to believe in order to be saved. He went to the cross and died in your place. He took all of our sins and judgment upon them from God in our place on the cross. He was buried and three days later raised from the dead to give us eternal life. And so much more. But eternal life is the key to where you're going and who you are. When you die, you'll be absent from this body as a believer. You'll be absent from this body and you'll be present with the Lord because he promised it. In John 14, 1, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And so he has. You have that confidence from the scriptures. Again, Moran, what must I do? You must believe. The gospel is the power of salvation to everyone who believes, Paul said in Romans 1.16. You need to do it.
tonight, you need to do it now. If you haven't done it, you need to do it now. If you've done it, you're not quite sure because you've lived in some sin. It's because you don't understand the Christian life. You need to go to our website, pull down information, or from doctrinalstudies.com and study some of these principles. Father, we're so thankful tonight for these that have come our way by automobile and by the internet. <clears throat> and we pray, Father, that there would be clarity of understanding and at least there's enough material for them to study and study and study. But studying won't get you to heaven, but believing will. Study will help you after you believe. Will help you grow. Grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before that, it's all about the gospel. It's not about the Bible. It's not about church. It's not about other Christians. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about the cross. It's all about the gospel. That's what it's all about. And if you're trying to confuse these two things, well, I've been to church. I didn't get anything. Oh, I know believers. They don't live. I, eh, forget all that foolishness. That's all foolishness. That's a distraction to you. Father, make it clear tonight that what's important to the unbeliever is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel is that Jesus died, was buried, and raised from the dead on their behalf. And when they believe it, they will get saved. Then, then they can talk about the church. Then they can talk about the Bible. They can talk about the Holy Spirit. Then they can talk about these things in the reality of the new birth. I pray tonight, Father, for these people that have been confused and they're, they're all over the place with this. May they get clarity. May they pull down this study and study this thing. May they stay with me. If they're by the internet with me, they need to stay with me. Pick a night, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Sunday, and stay with me one year faithfully. And you will see God transform your life. God, you will see God transfer your life if you pay attention to it. Get you a night and stick to it for a year. Complete something in your life that would be beneficial for you for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting our sins against us. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us.